Welcome back to LearningControlSystems.com. Uh, like we mentioned in earlier videos, uh, this test is not just limited to petrochemical, but you know, just chemical, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, uh, electrical power generation. Uh, there's many different disciplines we can use this, and we're going to cover some subjects that uh, you may not have covered in school, or at least some material that may be a little uh, not as obvious as what you would normally do. Uh, we're going to cover this material in 12 units. It'll be 12 modules you see above, and each one of these will take one at a time. So, uh, what we're going to do is walk you through what we're covering, and we're going to focus on the critical subjects and the topic that may be more difficult to grasp or maybe they didn't cover in school, and it may be a little oblivious to you. And we're going to make sure you understand these topics. Okay, first we'll review our basic math skills. We need to understand our basis of numbers because these are used in controllers, DCSs, and PLCs. We'll be using binary, hexadecimal, and octal. Uh, the old PLCs use octal a lot. And so we need to understand how these bases of numbers work and uh, how we use these in a the PLC. It's important to understand that we can't uh, subtract, multiply, or divide, but understand we can only add in a PLC. Uh, functions do this for us. Next, we'll uh, look at a review of our algebra laws and our operations. We need to understand how to do the proper operations, and like exponents to a minus is an inverse function, and um, it is basically the reciprocal of the number on top, and so that's that to be 1 over the number. And we need to understand our powers like this raised to a 0 0.5. We need to understand that's 1 half, and that's a 1 over 2, which would be a power over a root, and the root would be the square root. So if it was a minus 0.5, that means it would be the reciprocal, or 1 over the square root of the number. Uh, then we're going to look at logarithms, and we're going to use these to uh, tell what our power attenuation is, or what our power gain is, uh, for voltage, current, power, uh, how much sound is coming from a valve, or some kind of device, and how much pressure is on the ear to meet laws that are required by OSHA for limits of sound noise and sound pressure. Uh, then we'll look at um, our calculus, review our basic calculus. We're going to look at just simple integral and differentiation. We'll use the differentiation to tell how quickly, say, a, a volume's changing or a level's changing, uh, like we have a spherical tank or a bullet tank, which is a centrical tank with basically round ends. And so we can use calculus to find out what the volume is as the height rises. Uh, we don't have to understand the calculus, just where the formulas come from. It'll be kind of complex algebra in the formula, but uh, again, we just plug it into a PLC or a spreadsheet and get our volume. This is why we need to understand how our powers work and how our exponentials work and how our methods of operation work in the uh, algebra to get the proper answer. Uh, then we'll look at uh, integral, and basically we use integral just to totalize like uh, how much gas is flowing in your house. It goes through a meter and it adds up how many cubic feet per month. Or when electric is coming in your house, it adds up how many kilowatt hours per month. And this is what integral is to us. Uh, either we're an integrating process, we're slowly raising up in the level of the tank, or we're slowly going down, or we're totalizing, we're adding up our uh, values over time. Next we'll look at applied thermodynamics. And uh, we're going to look at the ideal gas law and how this works. We're going to look at pressure, volume, and temperature relationships and how heat affects this and BTU content. These will be on your exams. And we're going to look at latent heat. And this is the amount of energy you have to put in, in calories, joules, or BTU to cause matter to change from solid to liquid or a vapor. And this is called a phase change. We'll study this. We'll also use our thermal to discuss 
how to calculate mass flow rates of pounds or moles. We'll use our moles to get our pounds mass. Um, say we got uh, so many standard cubic feet per hour of gas, but we want to know how many pounds of mass gas we have because this pounds of mass, this is how we get our BTU. Um, basically, the energy comes from the mass of the gas, and the more energy we have per volume, uh, the hotter the fire will burn. Next, we'll look at uh, fluid mechanics, and we'll look at head and what head is. This is energy that we put into the system. We're going to look at pressure and what pressure is and different types of pressure. We're going to look at weight of fluids and specific volumes and specific gravity and as well as gases. Uh, this is how much it weighs compared to air or water. We're going to look at how force is generated from the head and how force, what it has to do with uh, viscosity and how it uh, forces the flow of fluids through pipes and systems. We're going to look at pumps and how these pumps generate the head, the energy to put into the system, and how we have energy losses across our piping system as well. We're going to look at how flow measurement is made, and what is CV, constant velocity, and what does it have to do with valves and flow measurement. The next section is uh, industrial instrumentation, and this is the bulk of our studies. Uh, we're going to spend quite a bit of time on this. We'll study how to measure temperature and pressure and level and how to calibrate these instruments and how to apply these instruments properly. How to measure an exact flow. I mean, it has to be within a thousandth of a gallon sometimes, at least a hundredth of a gallon. We'll look at weight and how to measure weight in tanks, say like flour going into mixers or uh, how much liquid you have in a tank. We'll look at analyzers. These they are all on the exam, so they're important that we understand these. They'll tell us what the boiling point is. Uh, what the content of the fluid is and if it's pure. We'll size control valves and we'll look at how to size control valves properly. Um, we're going to look at different instruments and safety systems and of course process control and how it works and how to apply process control and tune our systems. The next module will be industrial networking and this is our future so we need to spend some time on this. Uh, the future control will be industrial networking. And we're going to understand switches and routers and bridges and wireless networks and firewalls. These are probably on your exam. Uh, but in real life, we need to understand what dynamic host connection protocol is, address resolution protocol, network address translation. And we need to have our TCIP, which everyone's familiar with. But we have special protocols of TCIP and industrial networks. And we'll look at all different kind of control networks and their protocols. Uh, control net, device net, Ethernet IP, uh, foundation field bus, uh, mod bus, etc. And we have to spend a little time on this and we'll understand how to put these together and how to program these switches and routers. This is a module that uh, looks complex but it's not that difficult. Um, you should catch on to it pretty quickly. We're going to barely cover you know, the theory of Ohm's law and voltage and currents and how they work in real world applications. We'll look at series parallel circuits. These are the same as uh, you got a transformer in series with another transformer. Or in your house, you know, you got your TV in parallel with your microwave and in parallel with your lights and in parallel with your receptacles. We need to understand how these work and what the power consumption is and what the voltage and current will be. We'll look at basic semiconductors just for understanding of how to connect our wires and how to connect our devices and make sure we don't damage our equipment. And we're going to spend a little time on analog and digital design. Uh, we need to understand our current loops and how these current loops work. It's very important we understand this and noise attenuation. And here's everybody's favorite. PLCs and motor controls. Most people are familiar with motor control or drives or starters or contactors or relays. And we're going to discuss the difference between NEMA, National Electrical Manufacturers Association, and I see the International Electrotechnical Committee and how these work. And we're going to look at frequency drives and speed controllers. It can be AC or DC. And we use these to control the motors and what the problems are and heating that comes from using these, uh, which can damage our motors. Uh, we're going to look at servo drives and stepper motors. And these are typically used in robotics or robotic type operations of moving things in precise, exact positions. And then we'll look at programming languages for our PLCs. 
Now, when it comes to uh, control systems, a lot of people don't think about it, but you have to understand industrial electricity. Uh, electrical systems are very important. This is how all of our controls function. So we need to have a solid understanding of industrial electricity and electrical systems. As a matter of fact, a technician should get a journeyman electrician's license. Uh, we have to design conduit and cable systems and size these per the NEC to meet local codes and state codes. Uh, we have to size our power systems and we have to size our wires for voltage drop and short circuit calculations, uh, including our cabinets have to meet uh, strict requirements of what the energy let through will be under a fault. Uh, we have to look how to design systems for hazardous locations so we don't have explosions. And we'll also look at critical standby systems. I mean, it's important that we keep these systems running, so we need to look at how to build a battery backup and a UPS system for them. We'll also look at lightning protection and protection from static charges, which can also cause an explosion, like at loading and unloading. Okay, now we're going to look at fluid power systems. And uh, fluid power systems are used a lot, especially in manufacturing. We use a lot in petrochemical and chemical plants as well. Uh, they can drive screws and conveyors, uh, but we use them to handle our robots and grabbing uh, material, moving material. Uh, under high pressure, we use servo hydraulic valves to position things and uh, extrude plastics. So um, the fluid power is very important. We'll cover the symbols and equipment, and this will probably be on your exam. Uh, but I'm going to cover pumps and hoses and how to size these pumps and these hoses to make the cylinders move at the speed you want and move the force you want. We're also going to look at um, air supply systems and what we need to actually power up the pneumatics in our plant and how to build these. Now like I was saying, uh, this isn't just petrochemical and chemical. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of controls and manufacturing plants. I mean this is very versatile uh, subject. We'll cover all kind of control networks and our pneumatics and our hydraulics we use a lot in manufacturing. But we also have to look at uh, not only the line control but statistical process control to make sure we meet the quality uh, of our specifications as required to put our product out so we don't get a lot of returns or throw material away. We'll look at inventory control systems and this also will be on your exams. Uh, they want to know about how to control inventory and uh, you don't want too much, you want just enough and you're trying to cool down your cost. And we're also going to look at manufacturing plant design, how to put in the utilities and the infrastructure and the electrical systems, the air systems, and distribute these utilities throughout the plant. Again, this is a subject that's uh, on a lot of the exams, uh, chemical plants and their processes. Uh, we use these, it doesn't matter if it's TI and you're making semiconductors, or it's Procter & Gamble and you're making soaps and shampoos, or if you're at Campbell Soup and you're making soups, uh, we use a lot of process control, including fudge stripe cookies used in rovers that come from tempering columns, and a lot of process control making your fudge stripe cookie. If we don't understand how these processes work, we can't control the processes. So we're going to be, our whole purpose is to control the process. That's the idea of instrumentation and process control. So it's critical we understand how these processes work so we can design the proper control system and the proper instrumentation. We're going to look at the code and what it takes to design these systems, that everything from fire to explosions, uh, you have to cover safety and how these safety systems we put in. We have to look at our ISA standards and our process industry standards uh, to document how these systems work so we can troubleshoot them as well as design them. Uh, these standards will be used extensively on your exams from uh, P&IDs to loop diagrams to wiring diagrams to block diagrams of how systems work and of course all the symbols that represent the equipment. We'll be installing, calibrating, and calculating the size and the installation and, and the outputs and we'll work on scaling these signals back and forth between voltage and current and pressure and temperature and displays. So that should cover us right there. Okay, last on our list is uh, project management. Now if you're a CST, a uh, very beginner, or a CCST1, a control systems technician level one, uh, you really won't have any questions on project management. If you're a CCST2, 
a level two control systems technician, you have some project management questions. But if you're a CAP, a certified automation professional, you're going to have uh, quite a few questions on uh, task, preventive maintenance, and scheduling. Uh, the project management will encompass about 50 to 56 percent of your exam. Uh, this is true for the automation professional or the CCST3. The uh, NCS uh, professional engineer will not have that many project management questions. They're more focused on actual application of instrumentation and calculations, but there will be a few questions on engineering economics and possibly project management. Well, basically that's it. Uh, We've covered everything we really need for our exams and certification. Uh, this will support any school work you've had. Uh, we'll be using some free materials, uh, some free instrumentation books and materials from our suppliers, their main catalogs and instruction manuals. Uh, besides that, that's it. Uh, you're pretty well covered. So uh, I'm ready to get started. I hope you are. hope you stick around. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.